I've argued in the past that Star Wars, the original film taken on its own, implies a world that doesn't have real-time interstellar communications. Many people have made good counter-arguments to my claim, so I'll address those and explain my reasoning here within the context of how we live in a strange time when instant worldwide communication is the norm. Let's start with how they got the Death Star plans into R2 in the first place. The film tells us this. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? It's not specified whether this is a sublight transmission from a nearby ship passing in orbit somewhere, perhaps to throw pursuers off the trail, or a real-time instant call from across the galaxy. But if it's the latter, why not just send it to the rebel leaders? Why all this porting an astromech droid around? Of course, the easy answer is, so the movie can happen, but let's consider it as a glimpse of another world reflecting a real technical limitation of some sort. Such an obsessive attempt to reconcile all this raises some points about interstellar communications and our own assumptions. First, we need to distinguish between faster-than-light communication and instantaneous communication. Aliens gives us a great example. How long after we're declared overdue can we expect a rescue? 17 days. LV-426 is said to be in the Zeta Reticuli system, which is 30-some light-years away. Clearly, the Colonial Marines have faster-than-light communications of some form. But Lieutenant Gorman here didn't call up Earth and get mission updates. There was no desk-bound light bird micromanaging the out from the Pentagon. These Marines were on their own. There's clearly a comm delay of some extent, which the extended cut makes explicit. I don't ask because it takes two weeks to get an answer out here, and the answer is always don't, don't ask. ask. This is how it was for the vast bulk of human history. We've been running empires with long communication delays for thousands of years. So the rebels put the Death Star plans in R2 and physically transport the droid. At no point does anyone even suggest transmitting the data anywhere, suggesting that it isn't an option for some technical reason. But what about those scouts on Dantooine? Our scout ships have reached Dantooine. They found the remains of a rebel base, but they estimate that it has been deserted for some time. They are now conducting an extensive search of the surrounding systems. If this story were set in the modern world, say an American recon team poking around Afghanistan or somewhere, they'd radio in if they found anything. Technically, they could get a direct line to the president on a sat phone if it was something really significant. But things were very different in the millennia before radio. If a scouting party is going to report back, they need to send someone. In the case of these Imperials checking out the Dantooine lead, it doesn't have to be one of the scouts. They could send back something similar to the probe droid, a little hyperspace-capable droid ship specifically for delivering militarily significant information as quickly as possible. Here's where it gets really interesting, though. Specific military operations can justify sending a craft to deliver a single message, but you wouldn't send ships to deliver every random incident report that may or may not be relevant to anyone. Star Wars gives us some clues as to what might actually be happening here without resorting to instant comms that, for some reason, the Rebels can't or won't use. First, the ubiquity of droids. Machines capable of handling vast amounts of data, collating it, and delivering relevant interpretations in an accessible manner. This is exactly what a protocol droid fluent in six million forms of communication is for, but the same principle can apply to sorting millions of militarily or administratively relevant reports from across vast regions of space. But how is the data getting to the droids in a useful time frame without a real-time interstellar communication network? Star Wars implies that there's a lot of interstellar traffic. We meet Han Solo in a grungy space truck stop full of private pilots with their own ships. His job is smuggling, implying a significant amount of interstellar trade and Imperial presence to enforce prohibitions on certain goods. There's a lot of ships zipping through the galaxy on any given day. Based on this, we could be seeing a daisy-chained comm system using existing ship traffic as the means of distribution for everything from galactic news reports to Luke's application to the Academy. And if these new droids do work out, I want to transmit my application to the Academy this year. For example, the Millennium Falcon blasts its way out of Mos Eisley and flies off into the black. The stormtroopers in Docking Bay 94 call it into their superiors. Exchange of fire with a YT-1300 freighter, multiple casualties, security imagery, and docking bay records as follows. And this report quickly makes its way up to the Imperial ships in orbit. There are ships patrolling regular routes all the time, but in this case there is already an elevated presence on Tatooine due to some problem with terrorists and classified data. 
Now, we can safely assume that every Imperial ship jumping into a system sends and receives data at a minimum identification for other Imperial ships. Basically, hey, we're friendlies, cool, we see you. But why not more? It would make a lot of sense for every arriving Imperial ship to receive a burst update of everything that's happening in the planetary system. Droids crunch it, and the command staff is very quickly up to speed on what threats they face and what needs to be done. But why just one way? If you have the bandwidth and the processing power, which it seems they do, the newly arriving ship can dump a packet of everything it picked up on its last stop, including what previous ships reported. They tell two ships, and they tell two ships. If this is the standard practice every time an Imperial ship enters or leaves a system, then word of every incident worth reporting can cross the galaxy with remarkable speed in a decentralized distribution system that is very hard to interdict. And we have no reason to think it's only Imperial ships. Could we really put it past them to mandate all ships have this sort of automated transponder system integrated into key systems that uses private traffic as a mechanism for transmitting data across the galaxy? Sure, shady operators like Han Solo would find ways to disable it, but legit outfits would leave it alone. That vastly increases the refresh rate of data. Every time a ship arrives at Coruscant, it delivers updates from everywhere it's been. Every time a ship leaves, it carries whatever the Empire wants publicly available, as well as low-security operational stuff. Word travels surprisingly fast. Of course, this incident on Tatooine isn't a typical spaceport gunfight on the Outer Rim. The Empire was there in force over the whole rebel terrorist thing. A ship fighting off a group of Imperial troops, then fleeing from two Star Destroyers sent to find the stolen plans, warrants a fast-track report. I'd expect they'd send a dedicated courier with updates like that. We've captured a freighter entering the remains of the Alderaan system. Its markings match those of a ship that blasted its way out of Mos Eisley. But surely not fast enough to get a description of the Millennium Falcon to the Death Star before the Falcon itself arrives. I mean, it's one of the fastest ships in the galaxy, right? She'll make point five past light speed. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. Captain Solo talks it up, but he's not exactly a trustworthy source on the matter. He's a smuggler trying to fleece some rubes. 10,000, all in advance. Are we really going to believe that this guy's freighter is faster than anything in the Imperial Navy? Very likely ships built deliberately for speed to deliver militarily sensitive information as quickly as possible? No. I like Han Solo, but he's a bit of a blowhard. The Empire's organizational structure also suggests a communication delay. How will the Emperor maintain control without the bureaucracy? The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. This implies delegation of authority, dividing the galaxy into semi-autonomous chunks that are easier to govern than trying to do it directly by the capital dictating downward. It's a time-honored way for empires to operate as they expand beyond their ability to centrally govern. Structurally, the Galactic Empire seems to be following a Roman or British imperial model. In this case, regional governors and moths acting as the on-site authority in the name of the Emperor. Broad policy is decided at the top, with details of implementation delegated downward. Of course, this arrangement of piggybacking communications as part of the constant flow of interstellar traffic is complete speculation on my part. Star Wars doesn't explicitly suggest it, and later stories in the franchise completely negate it. But taking the original Star Wars film on its own, this explanation is consistent with everything the story shows us, and I think it's a lot more interesting than a video phone that can call across a galaxy. I could be taking this entirely too seriously.